all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hope everyone is doing well and are happy in all the doings and are keeping well. Dear brothers and sisters, through this ministry, every day we are teaching many of our believers the prayer lessons, the practical prayer theory, wherein many of our brethren we are making them awake at morning five o'clock and sit at his presence kneel down at his presence bow at his presence be at his feet when you are practicing this and i appreciate one and all for it is the will of god it is a god's desire that you be in his presence you be with him, you look at him, you have to chat with him, you have chatting with him. He loves to chat with you, he loves to talk with you and he wants to listen while you talk, while you chat with him, while you express your feelings to him, while you glorify him. When you tell him, Lord, you are my strength, he feels so happy. It's the fact that he is watching you and it's the truth that Every inch of your life, every aspect of your life, every spear of your life is under the surveillance of God's CC camera. He is watching you, He is looking at you and whenever you come to His presence, He is so glad in your works. For you have spent the time that God has given to you in His presence. How much time we are spending in His presence? How much time we are spending in prayer? We waste a lot of our time that God is giving to us. In 24 hours in a day, if we really calculate the time that we are spending at His presence in our prayer, it is very, very meager. Maybe it comes to minutes, not even hours. Sometimes we feel ashamed if God stands before us and asks us, My dear child, did you pray today? Did you spend time with me? Did you read the word of God today? We feel very ashamed because we haven't done that. We, have done, we haven't done the homework that God has given to us. We did not pray. He did not read the Bible on that day. So since our ask, answer is no to him, we feel very ashamed. We bow down our head with shame. And we need to plead. Please forgive me, Father. At least from today, I'll spend time in prayer. I'll find time to spend time in prayer. I'm sure that the ample time, that lot of time I'm wasting, which is of no use at all. I'm spending lot of time in worldly activities, in the activities that are related to the flesh, but not to the divine activities. We are not looking at the cross. We are not finding time to worship Him. We are not finding time to glorify Him. We just have time only for our works. We time fine to eat, to drink, to make merry of the worldly activities. But it is shame on our part that many of the brethren, many of our today's believers, 2018 Christian God's children, many of us are not finding time to pray to God, to read the Bible, to read the word of God. Somewhere Saturn is hijacking us. Somewhere Saturn is stealing our valuable time. 
he shows something that does not have any relevance to God's work and we fall prey to that and just follow that path and at the end nothing, everything in vain dear brothers, dear sisters who are the chosen generation in this world as of day by none other than the mighty God, the Savior, you need to rise up to the occasion. God is looking at you, God is watching you, God wants you to be in His work. Find time to pray. Whenever you see that there is a leisure time, read the Bible. Meditate upon the word of God. If you do all these things, do you know what happens? We find happiness in Him. We find joy in Him. And that's what today our message is. Rejoice! Hello! Dear brother, hello dear sister. Rejoice! The word is very clear. You need to rejoice in Him. Rejoice in the Lord. Ah, how many of you really can say this word from the bottom of the heart? I have my happiness in Christ. I have my joy in Him only. Since I have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, all this that I am doing in this work, in this world, all the work that I am doing, I find happiness. Because I am aware of what I am doing. I am very sure that one day, even if I am no more in this world, I will be with my Lord. Happily with Him, I have that hope even now. I have that hope embedded in me, within me. So there is nothing for me in this world to fear. I only fear my God, I only fear my Lord. And the fear of the God draws me to Him, nearer to Him. And when I am nearer to God, sitting in His presence, what a more joy I get, what a more happiness that I get. Yes, how many of us are really rejoicing in Him? How many of you are glad in Him? He wants you to be happy. He wants you to, to be merry. That's what God is teaching us. But everything in the spear, everything in the boundaries, it should be in the Lord. If you go away, you'll go astray and you'll fall in problems. Thank you everyone for supporting this ministry, for praying for this ministry. And all these days, while we are meditating upon the prayer aspects, really, how wonderful God is driving us. God is teaching us the most precious time of a day we are spending in His presence. And God will definitely bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. He will bless you for all that you are doing in His presence. He has got an account for, for that. Don't be of the impression that when you sit in the church for one hour, when you pray for one hour, when you read the Bible for one hour, it's a waste. No, 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 no. Take away such thoughts from your mind. If you spend one day in His presence, God is accounting it to a thousand days. Are you aware of that? You know that. But when it comes to practical life, we fail. We are good in theory. We buy a lot of verses. But when it comes to practicality, we fail. That's what we read in James. You have got a very good faith. But faith 
without works is of no use at all. It's dead, equal to deadly man. You may say a lot of words, but in your deeds, a big zero. He wants us to be a faithful worker. It's good that you are a faithful believer, a worker in his vineyard, working day and night to bear the fruit. He is giving you all the resources. He is providing you all the needs. Many of your desires he has fulfilled. You check your family. You check your all the past 10 years or 20 years of life. Go back how God has done miracles in your family. In your personal life. At that time, you did not have any job. You were starving literally for job. Asking every person. Sending the curriculum victim. CV to all the companies. Every day. Turning to the appointments page. And feeling very lonely. And looking to God. Lord when will I get the appointment? When will I get the employment? Age is barring. But today, after 10 years, 20 years down the line, you are flooded with funds. You have been elevated to a very good position that you have never expected. You have a good house. You have a good family. A lovely family. A blessed family. Do you think that it is because of you? No, no, no. It's purely God's provision. That has made you enjoy all the resources that he has given. You should be able to tell him. Every day you should praise him for, for what you are today. Yes, he is a miraculous God. He is a mighty God. For him, there is nothing that is impossible. Are he is a God who has healed a person who is blind from birth. He is a person who has healed the lepers. Just touching his cloth. People get healed. The dead were risen by his words. Why are you not looking at him? His strength, his power, his mightiness. He is a sovereign God. He is the creator of this universe. The inhalation and exhalation is his breath that has been poured into you. Through the nostrils of Adam, even today, you are taking breath. It is his mercy upon you. But you, many times taking all the mercies that he has given, that the grace that he has provided, you are making yourself a worldly person. You are mostly engaged in the worldly activities. You want something to be doing, engaged in your work, but you don't find time for God. That is the reason the mercies that he has given, you are making them into a curse. You are not finding time to be in his presence. Dear brothers and sisters, God is warning us. God is explaining us the reasons for the reasons why He is giving us the life, extending our life day by day. How old are you? You might be 60 or 70 or 50 or 40 or 30 or 20. The, all these years, it is He who has given you. And how much time you have returned him back. In this 50 year span of life, if you really count, have we given at least 5 years? I don't think so. 1 year, 2 years, oh that also might be very great. 
But when we look back, our spiritual life is of a very low position, a very low category. Why don't you pray? Why don't you read the Bible? Why don't you do the research in God's word? Find time to pray. Many of the believers are not even praying. Please pray. Prayer is the powerful weapon. It's prayer that changes things. That makes impossible possible. It's prayer. Dear brother, are you praying every day? Are you kneeling down every day? If not, take a decision today. You being the chosen person of that mighty God, you fit for nothing and calling him father. Do you have got any privilege to be called as his son? But he has given that privilege through his son. He made his son a sacrifice for you. Why don't you understand that? He made his only begotten son, who was bo his, who is bosom at his bosom. He has given his son, the only son, the one whom he loved the most. He has sent him to Calvary, to the cross. And the cross is nothing but a curse. A curse for the sins that you have done. For all the activities that you have performed. The judgment is a person has to get hanged and put to death. A death that is a cursed death. So God has taken your place. He put his son on, his, on the cross of Calvary. Through the blood that he has shed. You are redeemed. You have been chosen and given the privilege of being called as his son. Otherwise, are you worthy enough to be called as his child? You now come to his presence and say, Abba, Father. Within a second, he may throw you out. He can throw you out. He will throw you out. But he is not doing that. He is just loving you. He is just taking care of you. He is showing grace upon you. Even though you are not giving time to him, you are not finding place in your heart to give to him, even though you are not working his, in his vineyard as per his will, he is still looking at you. My dear son, my dear daughter, I have given my life to you. What is it that in return you can give it to me? What is it that you can give me? Can you give your firstborn child? He is asking all the mothers, can you spare your firstborn child for my work, as Hannah did, can you do that? Maybe our answer is a very difficult answer to say yes. Sometimes he asks the one which you love the most, one which you find that it is precious, he asks that, can you give it? Can you give it? You should be able to give it. That is the standards of spiritual life. The growth of spiritual life. If you have grown in, in him, with him, you will say as simple as, I am for you Lord, I am no more I, but Christ, Paul, in the letter to Philippians, he says, For me to live 
is Christ. What a, a simple message, but a great message, a great sacrifice. It needs lot of guts. It needs lot of courage to say, for me to live, not I, but Christ. The I has to make, has to be made see. The I in you should be converted, it see. For I to convert into see, it has to bend. It has to undergo a transformation. And that is what God is looking at you. He wants you to be shaped into His image, into His mind, into His lifestyle. The book of Philippians teaches us all these lessons. The mind of Christ, yes, He was at the bosom of the Father, but He has left that place and has descended from heaven just to redeem you. He has come for you, my dear brother. Otherwise, your situation is very critical. You have to be thrown into the lake of fire if that salvation work is not done. So he has come. And he has prepared a salvation for you. And today you are happy. You are enjoying. You are glad in it. For every act, tell him, Lord, I am happy. I am delighted in you. I am enjoying thy presence. Really, it is only Christians in this world who can really be happy. Whatever may happen around you, the surroundings around you may be very alarming, very disturbing, but you being a Christian believer, a chosen person of God, redeemed through the blood of precious blood of Jesus, you, there is no need for you to bother about what is happening in the world, what is happening in the around you. You need to bother what is happening in you. If you are disturbed, if you are carried away with the demonic, satanic forces, then there is danger. But as long as God is within you, you are enjoying His salvation, you are enjoying His protection, Ah, what a joy, what a rejoice, what a happiness. Today, God is speaking to each one of us. God is touching each one of us. God is speaking to you. Take a small decision by telling him, Lord, today you have spoken to me. It's not I am who is speaking. It's the Lord who is speaking. I am just an instrument to be clear, I am a puppet, but God speaks to you directly. The Holy Spirit that is within you talks to you every often, quite often when He is speaking to you. When the Holy Spirit God in you is speaking to you, how are you responding to Him? Many times, the God, Holy Spirit who is in you, He is weeping. He is just weeping because you are not listening to His word. You are not going in His ways. Yes. Let us take a small decision. Let us make ourselves resubmit to Him. 
make a firm decision. In Jesus, I have victory. In Jesus' name, there is victory. In Jesus' name, there is redemption. There is joy, there is blessings. All the blessings that you are enjoying is only because of Jesus, Jesus alone. My dear brothers and sisters, whatever situation you may be, try to find time to come to His presence. Try, try to find time to put all your problems before Him through prayer. Do that immediately and God does miracles. His name is Miraculous God. He is a marvelous God. He has taken care of us. Taking care of us. Every day He is protecting us. Every minute He is protecting us. When you are at sleep, He is protecting you. When you are outside in the traffic, He is protecting you. When you are, when you are at work, He is protecting you. When you are at home, He is taking care of you. Wherever you are, whatever situation you are, He is protecting you. He is protecting you. He is protecting you. The unseen God, He is sending angels and is protecting you. It is true that God is our refuge. We find the protection only in His arms. Only in His hands we have protection. Dear brothers, we know the wonderful verse that is there in Philippines 4.4. 4. Let us turn to Philippines chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice as bow heads and pray for a while for all that he has done. And let us meditate upon this small verse for a few minutes. Just do not go here and there. Be at His presence. Watch carefully. Listen carefully. Give heed to His words. These are God's words. These give us strength. They are the food for our spiritual life. If you does not eat food, you become weak. Same is the case in your spiritual life too. When you does not have proper food, your spiritual life gets weakened. And that is the reason many times Satan is attacking you and you are falling very frequently. And you are falling prey to him very frequently. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. A wonderful Father in heaven, we thank thee, we praise thee, we glorify thee. For whatever we are today is only because of thy grace. Lord, you have talked to us in many ways during this morning time. Lord, through this ministry, you are speaking to us and teaching us how to pray in the early hours of the day. As the example set by our Lord Jesus Christ, we too. You are teaching us to follow Him. Our, our, our dear, a loving God, early in the morning, He used to go, He used to get up early and go for prayer and go to pray sometimes to mountains. Sometimes to far places. 
he spent most of his time in prayer. What an example we have in Jesus. Lord, through this ministry, you are teaching us to pray, pray, pray. Many of our brothers and sisters, yes, they are taking time to pray. They are spending time in prayer every day, in this morning time. They are giving their precious time to sit at thy presence, at thy feet. Listen to thy word and talk to thee through prayer. Lord bless all those families. Take care of all those family needs. Provide them the necessary necessities they are looking at. Lord, we just pray that every Christian believer should shine in this world for thy sake. We pray that every person should glow in this world by glorifying Thee. You are blessing our families, blessing our ministries, blessing all those people who are supporting in your ministry through prayer, through wonderful offerings, through the gifts. Lord, this ministry you are really, in an amazing manner, supporting us. In an amazing way, you are helping us. Lord, thank you for you are using me as a small instrument in thy work. In the kingdom of God, I am also being used as a small instrument. Give me the courage. Teach me the lessons. Give me the strength to stand for thee. Lord, many times I am going astray. I am not able to concentrate. I am not able to spend a lot of time in prayer. Forgive me. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Father. I seek thy pardon. For my spiritual life is not in such a way that is pleasing to thee. All our brothers and sisters who are watching this program, many are praying the same way. Look at them. Forgive them. Pardon them. Lord, they are making a decision in their heart that at least from today, we will spend time in prayer. We will spend time in reading the word of God. We will spend time in, his, in, your, in your presence. We will spend time to go to church. We will find time to work in his vineyard. We are taking a small decision. Lord, we are putting our hands in your hands and making a oath today that this life is only because of you. This is a gift that you have given to us. Many or no more today but Lord, we are alive. I am alive. It is only because of thy grace. Yes, being alive. Lord, being alive today, in every act of our life, in every part of our life, we commit ourselves into thy presence, into thy hands, that we will do thy work. We will be engaged in the heavenly work. We will be an instrument to bring at least one soul to thy presence. The lot of persons who are perishing, the lot of souls who are perishing without the knowledge of Christ. I will be an instrument. We all will be an instrument in bringing at least one person to thy presence, to the knowledge of Jesus. But today we pray specially for all those persons who are celebrating their birthdays. Bless them abundantly. You have blessed them with one more year. A crown of one more year. All this year, you bless them. Protect them. Fulfill their desires, whatever they want. Lord, 
to fulfill their desires. We also pray for all the persons who are celebrating the wedding anniversaries today. Bless the wonderful couple. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Bless their families, bless their children. In the coming year, there be a blessing to many. Lord, we have read one verse from Philippians. Talk to us, talk to each one of us who are watching through live, through the TV, through the YouTube, through the media, through the app. Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them. And talk to us in a wonderful way. For we have read the verse, rejoice in the Lord. Teach us how to be in, the, in, in rejoicing all the time. We commit ourselves into thy hands and pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brethren, we have read a wonderful verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Philippians is one of the wonderful books. The book that is written by Paul from prison. It see all the persons who are really enjoying in the Lord. For them even prison is not making them to grief even putting being putting in being put in prison they are not worried see paul sitting in prison he boldly writes a letter to philippians and he he doesn't at any point of time feel that he is at low instead he writes to philippians you rejoice in him See, I am here in jail only because of the gospel's sake. I am not afraid of all these cowardly activities that are being done by this Roman Empire. But for me, I, what all I want to do, I am doing it for Christ's sake. And so, for me to live is Christ. Even if I die, there is nothing that I need to worry. And telling all these things, he write to Philippians to have the mind of Jesus, to be in the knowledge of Jesus and to rejoice in the Lord. He tells to them, you be happy. You just be joyful. You be united. Can any person from prison write such letter? It's only a Christian believer can do. A faithful servant of the Lord only can do. Rejoice in the Lord always. Today God is speaking to each one of us. You may be in a situation like a prison-like situation. Your household situation. Your family situation. Your personal life may be in a very disturbing, distracting, in a very low situation. You might be shedding tears day and night because of the problems that you are facing. Don't mind. There is nothing to worry. For God is your Redeemer. You are His chosen generation. He has chosen you. You are His child. There is nothing that can prosper against you. Only you will prosper. And all around you, they will be put to down. It is the God's command. It is the God's covenant with you. When you have accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior, that day itself, you are a victorious person. You are a joyful person. You are a person with peace. Because no human can touch you. 
no worldly person can touch you, no officer can touch you. They may do harm to your body, but you are with him. Even if they touch you, God is going to take care of them. We have a we have lot of examples. We have a lot of history to know all these things. But today, we will just look at three verses. For a person to rejoice in the Lord, where actually, in which area, thus the real joy comes. I have just turned to the Oxford Dictionary and search for the meaning of rejoice. So, the word that is written is, the meaning is great joy. It is not the normal joy. Rejoice is a great joy. The pinnacle of happiness is rejoice. You need to rejoice. That is the reason why God is giving you everyday life. Enjoy with him. Be merry with him. Tell him, Lord, I am happy, Lord, for you are my God, you are my strength, you are my redeemer. 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If he is there, what is the reason for me to worry? He has taken all my worries. He has taken away all my burdens, so I am free. So, the first thing is, let us uh, turn to Psalms 21 and verse 1. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. And in the salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. The first thing is, you can rejoice in God's salvation. It is only in the God's salvation that you find the happiness, the real joy, the glad, the gladness and the rejoice. How greatly shall he rejoice in God's salvation? Shall I ask you a question? Do you have the experience of God's salvation? Have you repented for your sins? Are you saved? If you are saved, ah, oh, what a great joy. If you are not saved even till today, you have not taken the decision, you have not repented for your sins, I just want to say, this is the time. This is the time. Just bow at his presence. Fall at his feet. The Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Cleanse with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. These three words that he will just hug you and say, You are my child. Your sins are forgiven. You are my child. The first thing is, in the God's salvation, we shall rejoice. The second one is Psalm 63, 7. Let us turn to Psalm 63, verse 7. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. The second one is in God's protection. You can rejoice or you will rejoice or the real rejoice is. See, there is nothing for you to worry because you are in his protection. You are under his arms, under his wings. See, these are the words that make you rejoice. What will happen to me because I am under his protection? See, when you are in a safe place, you do not find any disturbance. Or you do not have any sort of fear. You will be happy. Because you are in the safe place. See, in the same way, you are in the safe place in the arms of the Lord. He is protecting you. 
since God is your protector, since you are under the God's protection, you need to rejoice, you will be rejoicing. That is the reason for your rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, for you are under God's protection. Rejoice in the Lord always, for you are God's salvation. The third one is, let us look at Psalm 106, verse 5. That I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. See, in God's blessings, you will have the real gladness, the real happiness. You can rejoice because you are under God's blessings. He has given lot of inheritance. You are his child. You are preparing for heaven. And there he is preparing for you. You will be with him forever and ever. He has given you the inheritance to be called his, his child. If you are his son, he is what all God has, you also will have. You have got that he has written a will to you. And in this earthly, in this worldly life, God is blessing you. He is blessing you wonderfully, isn't it? So there are three areas, three spheres of life. The first one is rejoice in the Lord always. For you have the God's salvation. Rejoice in the Lord always. For you have God's protection. Rejoice in the Lord always. For you have God's blessings. Ah, rejoice. Be happy. Be happy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And the verse again he repeats the same word. And again I say rejoice. So he want to stress upon that word. Rejoice. 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 Dear brothers and sisters. Rejoice. Rejoice in his presence. Rejoice under his protection. Rejoice for he has blessed you. Because he has got the salvation. And the second area we will touch about three areas. Or three agents who carry this happiness, this rejoice. Let us turn to 1st Chronicles chapter 16 verse 10. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. So you, you have rejoice in your heart. The first one is, since you are seeking him, since you are looking at him, since your eyes are at him, your heart is rejoicing. Do you have the real rejoice in your heart? You will get it only if you look at him. The second one is Psalms 35 verse 9. Let us look at Psalms 35 verse 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. First one is heart. Second one is soul. Our soul rejoices in him. In his salvation. Ah, ah, ah. It will be joyful in the Lord. Heart. The soul. And let us look at the last one. Luke chapter 1 and verse 47. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. The third one is spirit. So your heart, your soul and the spirit. Rejoicing in him. Rejoicing in him. Let we get the power, the strength from the Lord that we may rejoice in him always. Let us bow our heads, a wonderful God. We thank you for your wonderful message. Lord, you have taught us to be happy, merry. 
be joyful, be glad. And that is the reason why you are telling us, rejoice in the Lord. Only in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Bless all our family members, our team, our partners. Bless this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Dear brothers and sisters, today we want to convey our wonderful birthday wishes to a wonderful, lovely Jakey boy, Mr. Aaron. You can see how happy he is. So today is his birthday. Let us sing a wonderful song to him. God has blessed this family. Prasanna and Shalini. Yes, they have got two wonderful kids. Today is the birthday of the second son. See how joyful he is. So we pray for this family. Because this is the family who are supporting lot of God's children. They love God's children. They are sending their offerings to many of the ministries. And even today our ministry also they are supported abundantly. Let us pray for them. Lord, we thank you, we praise thee. We convey our birthday wishes to the wonderful kid, our own J.K. Bless him, give him the knowledge, give him good health in the year ahead. He be a, a wonderful, joyful person, giving joy to all the family members, to all the well-wishers, relatives. Bless his studies, bless his health. Bless the family, entire family. Thank you for the, you have given them as a blessing to all our family members. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear brothers, dear sisters, please pray for this ministry. All this 100 days from 16th of September till December 25th, every morning we are spending time to pray. We are praying for every of your needs and many of our prayer requests have been heard. God is blessing, doing miracles. We need to be faithful to him. We need to spend time to him. Just spend time in prayer, reading the word of God. As long as we are in this world, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Let us listen to this wonderful song. God bless you all. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bring. We shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. There shall be showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops from us so fully, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Shall we?